When you think of Nestle, what comes to mind? Candy? Nesquik? Nescafe? Childhood memories? Controversies? Boycotts or some serious hate? Well, it's safe to say that any of those thoughts might be spot on. This video is all about Nestle, the renowned Swiss food and beverage giant with a fascinating history spanning over 150 years. But beware, behind its glossy corporate facade lies a web of controversies and unsettling revelations that have shaken the world. From humble beginnings to a global giant, its remarkable evolution over the years is a success story wrapped in scandals. Our story starts back in 1866 in the picturesque town of Vevey, Switzerland. A Swiss pharmacist known as Henri Nestlé, who had a knack for experimenting with all sorts of things, developed an innovative infant cereal, and in turn, his new company. This cereal, known as Farine Lactée, turned out to be so nutritious that it saved a child's life. However, around this time, Europe's first condensed milk factory, the Anglo-Swiss Condensed Milk Company, entered the scene, becoming Nestlé's rival. After decades of fierce competition, in 1905 they joined forces, forming the Nestlé and Anglo-Swiss Condensed Milk Company. It was a turning point for Nestlé. This merger not only expanded Nestlé's product portfolio to include chocolates and other dairy products, but also paved the way for their global expansion. Nestlé's growth skyrocketed during World War I, and by the end of the war they had 40 factories worldwide. In 1938, they revolutionized the coffee industry with the invention of instant coffee and the launch of Nescafe. The World War II era brought more success, including acquisitions like Maggi in 1947 and the introduction of Nesquik in 1948. Nestle didn't stop at food. They ventured into cosmetics by acquiring L'Oreal in 1974 and expanded into pharmaceuticals with Alcon Laboratories in 1977. In 1984, they made history with a $3 billion deal to acquire Carnation. And let's not forget their coffee dominance, with the launch of Nespresso in 1986. The acquisitions continued with Buidoni and Roundtree in 1988, followed by Perrier in 1992. Nestle's rise to prominence is undeniably impressive, but every success story has its darker side. Throughout its history, Nestle has faced its fair share of controversies that have tarnished its reputation and sparked global outrage. One of the most shocking revelations surrounding Nestle involves its association with child slavery in the cocoa industry. Cocoa is a key ingredient in chocolate and it mostly comes from West African countries like Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. But here's the heartbreaking truth. In those regions, kids as young as five years old are often forced to work in dangerous conditions on cocoa farms. Back in 2005, the whole issue got some much needed attention. The International Labour Rights Fund took legal action against Nestle, among others, on behalf of three Malayan children. They claimed that these children were trafficked to Côte d'Ivoire, forced into slavery and subjected to frequent beatings on a cocoa plantation. But in 2010, the US District Court for the Central District of California ruled that corporations couldn't be held accountable for violating international law and dismissed the case. Now, here's where things get controversial. People were outraged by this decision, and it's still being appealed to this day. But even if Nestle wasn't legally responsible, they definitely had a moral obligation to address these abuses. The Fair Labour Association FLA, found that Nestle was well aware of where their cocoa was coming from and the conditions under which it was produced. Shockingly, they didn't do much to improve those conditions. And get this, back in 1998, a report by UNICEF already mentioned that traffickers were bringing children from Mali and Burkina Faso to work on cocoa farms in Côte d'Ivoire, the top cocoa exporter in the world. Guess who was indirectly benefiting from this terrible practice? Yeah, Nestle and the other major chocolate companies. It raised serious doubts about their ethical standards and Nestle had to respond. They made a promise to eliminate child labor from their supply chain, vowing to do whatever it takes. Nestle's executive vice president for operations, José López, stated, the use of child labor in our cocoa supply chain goes against everything we stand for. He acknowledged that it's challenging for any company sourcing cocoa from Côte d'Ivoire or Ivory Coast to guarantee that child labor doesn't happen, but Nestle made it clear that tackling this issue was a top priority for them. 
To address the problem, the company also introduced the Nestle Cocoa Plan, aimed to improve the lives of cocoa farmers and put an end to child labor. Yes, they made some progress, but let's be real, it's an uphill battle against a deeply rooted issue. Another dark chapter in Nestle's history unfolded in the 1970s when it was accused of aggressively marketing baby formula in developing countries. They took it to the extreme by sending saleswomen dressed as nurses to convince mothers that their formula was superior to their own breast milk. But hold on a second, that claim is categorically false. According to a 2007 Save the Children report, breastfeeding is unparalleled in providing the ideal food for infants. The optimal way to nourish a baby is through exclusive breastfeeding for the first six months, followed by breastfeeding combined with complementary foods until the child reaches two years old. If that's not convincing enough, check out this mind-boggling statistic from UNICEF. A formula-fed child living in disease-ridden and unhygienic conditions is between 6 and 25 times more likely to die from diarrhea and 4 times more likely to die from pneumonia than a breastfed child. That's a staggering difference, no? But deep down, things were even worse. The International Baby Food Action Network revealed that Nestle contributed free samples to new mothers in impoverished regions where access to clean water and proper sanitization was limited. Can you imagine the consequences? These marketing strategies actually led to a decline in breastfeeding rates and a subsequent rise in infant mortality. It's truly heartbreaking. The World Health Organization and various advocacy groups wasted no time in condemning Nestle for its despicable practices. But guess what Nestle did? They tried to deflect the blame by suggesting that critics should focus on improving unsafe water supplies which contributed to the health problems associated with bottle feeding. Then activists and concerned individuals applied intense pressure on Nestle, leading to a full-blown boycott that lasted seven long years. Eventually, Nestle buckled under the pressure and agreed to change its marketing practices in accordance with World Health Organization bylaws on infant formula. But here's the kicker. Critics argue that the company started to revert to its old ways almost immediately. You'd think that with all the global outrage and the mountains of research highlighting the harms caused by infant formula, the market for these products would shrink. But no, it's actually an $11.5 billion industry today and still growing. Now let's talk about Nestle and its not-so-friendly practices when it comes to water extraction. In the United States, where they've been accused of taking advantage of natural water sources, California in particular, a state known for its drought-prone areas, has been a hotbed of controversy for Nestle. Apparently, they've been helping themselves to water from the San Bernardino National Forest without a permit since 1988. And get this, they've even been bumped to the front of the line for a permit renewal, which will take a whopping 18 months. In the meantime, they can keep on pumping water as long as they pay a laughable $524 annual fee. Now, the exact amount of water Nestle is extracting from the forest is a bit hazy, but estimates suggest in 2021 alone they took around 50 million gallons. That's no small number. But wait, there's more. Nestle doesn't stop at the forests. They've been accused of exploiting groundwater in areas where the public needs it most, all for the sake of turning a profit. Critics argue that their bottled water business is just making things worse, worsening water scarcity and trampling on the rights of local communities. In response to all this backlash, Nestle has come out with a plan to improve their water stewardship practices. They say they're committed to reducing their water usage, adopting more efficient technologies, and even working with local communities to address their concerns. Despite their claims of following World Health Organization regulations, several countries and organizations are still giving them the cold shoulder. It's not just some small time thing either. There's a whole committee dedicated to monitoring Nestle's practices called the International Nestle Boycott Community. They're keeping a close eye on everything. However, Nestle has been making efforts to clean up their act and win back the trust of the public. They've committed themselves to responsible sourcing, going all out to eliminate deforestation from their supply chains and ensuring the well-being of their workers. Plus, they're jumping on the renewable energy bandwagon, reducing their greenhouse gas emissions and showing that they care about fighting climate change. Nestle has set some pretty ambitious goals for water management. They're determined to achieve water neutrality by 2025. Hmm, we'll see. 
Nestle has a track record of going the extra mile for profit, even if it means hurting people either directly or indirectly. So while they've been taking steps to fix their past mistakes, the road to true accountability is still a work in progress. As consumers, it's up to us to keep a watchful eye and demand transparency, sustainability and ethical behaviour from the brands we choose to support. By doing so, we create a future where companies prioritise people and the planet over profit. So let's join forces and contribute to a world that's not only tasty but also sustainable. Sounds delicious, doesn't it? Share your thoughts in the comments section below. See you in the next video.